Greetings and salutations. I am technically not a technician, and in today's video, we'll be reviewing the process needed to revert your Terminator 2 Arcade 1UP cab back to stock. This process can also be used to fix a cab, if you've had issues flashing your unit with the No Fake mod by misdirection of Team Encoder. However, I'll be back right after this legally required message. This video is for educational purposes only and is only intended to show you what I've done and what my results are. If you choose to modify your systems using this or any other information I've provided from any video or content I've created, you do so at your own risk. I, this channel, or any person connected to this video will not be held liable for any choices you make with your hardware or software. Modify at your own risk. With all the legal bullcrap out of the way, let's get started. For this video, we'll need version 1.0.1a of the No Fake mod by misdirection of the popular group team Encoder. At the time of making this video, this version of the mod is only available via the Patreon misdirection has set up to support his great work. Make sure you're using version 1.0.1a, or better. You'll also need an SD card, I would recommend using a high quality card, and I believe you need at least an 8 gig card or larger. We'll also need a program like Etcher. It doesn't have to be Etcher as many programs do the same, however, for this video, Etcher is the one we'll use. Now that you know what you need, head over to Miss Direction's Patreon and find the upload he did on April 2nd then download the No Fake mod from the Google Drive link. Once you've downloaded the No Fake file, you'll wish to insert your SD card and open Etcher so we can flash our No Fake image onto our SD card. If you're unsure of where to download Etcher, do not worry, as I'll be sure to put a link to it in the description to give you a little guidance and helping hand. After you've opened Etcher, you'll wish to locate and find the No Fake download and point Etcher to the file. Once you've pointed Etcher to the correct file, be sure to verify that you've selected the right SD card. If you do not, you'll overwrite whatever media you've pointed to, and all data will be lost from that drive. Also if you had anything on your SD card, it will be gone after flashing this image. So for the love of God, make sure there is nothing on the SD card that you wish to keep. After you've selected the no fate image and verified that you've got the correct drive selected, all you'll need to do is select the flash option. After making that selection, Etcher will extract the image from the download, and then flash our needed image on our SD card. Please note that this image will not only flash your cab back to stock, but this same image can also flash the no fake mod onto your cab. If you'd like to see a video on how to mod your cab with the no fake image, please know that I'll have a link to that video in the description, and I'll link to it up above too. Etcher will also verify that the image took to the SD card without any errors. This step can be skipped, but I'm not going to. I like to be safe, and this step helps me feel a little safer. After everything is set, and we started our flash it took about 1 minute and 45 seconds. However, I'll speed it up, to help us save some time. Once it's completed, we'll remove our SD card and move to our T2 cab. When we are at our T2 cab, we'll need to pull our cab away from the wall, then use a screwdriver to remove the screws from our back panel. With the screws removed we can take our back panel off giving us the access we need to the inner workings of our arcade cabinet. With the back panel off access the PCB board and insert the SD card into the bottom of the T2 cab's PCB. This isn't the easiest thing to do, so please use caution when doing so. After you've inserted the SD card, move to the front of the cab, and power the unit on. When you do so for the first time, you should see the friendly team encoder logo screen load. Lovely, isn't it? I'm going to digress for a moment, however before I do, I'd like to say that I don't wish to come off as a logo snob, but I've got to say, if you've ever studied logos and advertising, then you'd be aware that Team Encoder did a great job with their branding. You're told by the experts that you'll wish it to be simple with as few colors as possible, something that draws the eye, and is memorable. They've clearly made those marks, and even added mystery with the question mark. I'm going to have to work on mine. With that said I believe the digression is over. When you're at the Team Encoder logo screen it will take a minute, and if you have a slow card, your time may take longer. Please practice patience here. After the SD card loads you'll be given two options. The first is to press the Player 2 button to revert this cab back to stock, or you can press the Player 1 button and install No Fate. For today's guide we'll be pressing the Player 2 button, so we can change our system back to stock. After making our selection the cab took about 50 seconds or so to flash back to stock, and we'll be speeding this up to help save some time. 
you'll also get a message letting you know what is going on, and asking that you do not turn off the power, as that would totally suck. Assuming that you used a quality SD card, you didn't make any mistakes, nor did you power the unit down at an inopportune time, you should be presented, when done of course, with a message that states your T2 is now restored. Remove the micro SD card, and restart. I'll be doing just as the message says, and I recommend that you do the same. Personally, I was curious to see if these actions would really bring my unit back to stop, and I was happy to see that the load screen did come back. However, will I have the same functionality as I did before the mod? Will the online leaderboard still be working? Will I have any ill effects at all? Let's find out together. I was also very happy to see the arcade 1UP boot video. That video is certainly a good start, and a great sign that all is well. However, I feel like we should test this fix out a little, just to verify that everything is working, and that we don't have issues. I don't believe we will, I just want to verify. I was very surprised to see that the Wi-Fi is still connected. That makes setting the unit back up a little easier, and I'm going to update the cab right now, as I want to verify that online updates are working, and make sure there is no issue. The download took about 4 minutes and 30 seconds to do. We will of course be speeding that up, and remember, your time should be different as we all have different internet speeds we are working with. In fact, I'm in Houston, Texas, and right before this video was filmed we did have storms, and the internet has felt slow ever since. So I guess I've no real idea how long it will take. Just be patient, and don't do anything crazy. Once the update is done downloading, the unit will reboot itself, and our cab will run the update. This took me about a minute to do, I would guess that your time should be about the same. I'll again be fast forwarding this for time. You'll note that we are given the message to not power our cabs down during this as that would be counterproductive, and we don't wish to be counterproductive. Once our update is finished installing itself on our cab, the unit will automatically reboot itself, and if you've got no errors or issues you should see a load screen as normal, and after the load screen you should get the arcade 1UP booting video that plays at each start. If your boot video doesn't play, I guess something has gone wrong, and you may need to reach out to arcade 1UP for a little support. If I'm being honest with everyone, I was a bit taken back with the fact that not only is my Wi-Fi still active, but the leaderboard seems to be right where I left it. I felt that was very cool, and kind of made things a little easier. I'm not a big fan of the leaderboard. However, I'm not the only one in the community and some of you really have sexy scores. I'm guessing those of you with sexy scores like seeing your name in lights at the top. I'm not one of you, but I get it. Also, I've got to admit that I set my gameplay to super easy, as I totally suck at gaming. I didn't have to change any of those settings as they too were left in place. Kind of cool if you ask me, as I am very lazy. But how about the game itself, will it play well? What about the volume controls? Do they still work? Those are all great questions. First, the gameplay is as designed from the factory. I've got no issues, and the game seems to be running fine. As for the volume control, that too is working well, and I've had no issues with using them. In short all seems to be working with this fix. I'd like to thank you for checking out this video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and found it informative. If you did, or even if you didn't, please consider liking this video, leaving me a comment, and sharing this video with a friend or to your social media. If you've not done so, please consider subscribing to the channel. All of these actions are simple clicks of the mouse to you, but those small actions help this little channel beat the big bad YouTube algorithm. I thank you for those small clicks, and for your support.